This is the GK3 Ultra from Uniformation, and no, this isn't a camera illusion. This thing is absolutely massive. So not only am I gonna tell you all about the GK3 Ultra, we're also gonna be giving away a printer and six bottles of resin. So stay tuned while I give you my thoughts on the GK3 Ultra, and I'll tell you about the giveaway. So first things first, let's address this elephant in the room. Let's talk about build size. This thing is 300 by 160, by 300 and that is absolutely massive for a resin printer and not only is this thing big it's 16k which means using its 405 nanometer uv light this thing can spit out top-notch resin prints at super high resolution and another really nice feature about the gk3 is it has auto feed on the resin and heated resin feed which means if your space isn't super climate controlled then you don't have to worry about your resin being too cold this thing can control the temperature of the resin up to 25 C and it can also refill the vat for you so you don't run out mid print. Now one thing it can't do is reclaim the resin from the vat. That's one thing you're still stuck with doing is pouring resin from the vat back into your bottle or wherever you keep it. Now as you can see it has a huge touchscreen display in the front and the lid of this thing lifts up and you don't have to worry about lifting it off. It's actually attached to the printer on hinges so it makes lifting up the lid and accessing your prints super convenient and when it comes to the auto feed of this printer it actually comes with an empty bottle and you simply fill that bottle up and it has a compartment right here in the top of the printer where you lift out the bottle fill it up put it back in and it just plugs in like a cartridge now another thing that's like a cartridge on this thing is the carbon air filter that it comes with it has a built-in air filtration system that helps dissipate some of those nasty fumes that come from resin printing now that doesn't mean you can walk around without a respirator or work on the printer with no protection you still should always have your ppe but they definitely recognize is the fact that these put off nasty fumes so they've implemented a air filtration system to help mitigate those which is always a good thing now if you look right here on the corner of the printer it has a built-in level system at that little bubble right there whenever it's centered then you know that your printer is on a level surface and you always want it to be level that way your resin isn't leaning to the left right front or back now one thing that's really convenient on this printer is the way the back comes out it has these little slides right here that you simply just push forward and then you're able to lift out the vat just like that and take a look at this vat on this thing this thing is humongous now with the printer you are going to get a spare in FEP sheet and you're also going to get an extra screen protector but it already comes with one on the vat I went to go install this one and then I noticed that it already had one installed now this black frame right here actually goes around the screen protector I'm not exactly sure what it does but it comes with an extra one in case you need it now they do sell the ACF sheets. If that's what your preference is, then you can buy the ACF sheet. Now what's the difference between ACF and NFEP? Well, I'm not a resin printing expert, but from what I know, ACF is a little bit more expensive. It has a matte and a little bit of a texture to the back of the sheet. And it also allows you to print a little bit faster than the NFEP sheets. At the end of the day, those sheets are more a preference and what you decide you want to use. So I did end up getting screen protector and more sheets, but like I said, it comes with one of each. So you really don't have to get these right away when you're buying the printer. Now, speaking of the screen, this thing has a 13.5 inch LCD display and it's a 16K display. It's got an ultra high resolution at 15,120 by 6,230 with a pixel size of 20 by 26. Now the typical exposure time for this printer is around two to three seconds at a 0.05 layer. And that's pretty standard for printers nowadays. It's nothing like super special, but it's also not subpar either. Now the key features that set this printer apart from other printers on the market are one, the build size. It's absolutely huge compared to other printers and it has the automatic resin feed and it has the heated resin feed. Those are three features that a lot of other printers just don't have straight out of the box. Now it also has USB and Wi-Fi capability. So you can either use the USB flash drive and upload files that way, or you can just send them over Wi-Fi. Now it does have a standard UV wavelength of 405 nanometers. 
and that's pretty standard across the board for most LCD resin printers on the market now. Now on the Ultra model, the LCD display on the front of the printer, it doesn't flip up like on the other models like the Pro. It's stationary and you can't move it. That's just something to keep in mind in case you saw some of the other printers and you thought that maybe this one did that too. Now one thing while I was using this printer over a period of time, I felt like the resin feed was kind of slow compared to the X1. So the Hallett X1, the resin feed seemed to be a little bit faster than this one. So I reached out to Uniformation and they told me that it's purposely set like that. So whenever it's feeding new resin to the print, that it doesn't introduce layer lines into your print with the new resin feed. So they have to make sure that it feeds in at a certain rate to avoid those issues. Now, one thing that really surprised me about this printer is it doesn't have a built-in camera like some of the other GK3 models. And another thing that I found out after about 45 minutes of going on YouTube, looking online, looking in the book here, it didn't show anything about it and now I see why. They actually have a Uniformation app and I was trying to connect this printer and come to find out because it doesn't have a camera, it also doesn't have app access. Honestly, that just blows my mind in 2025 that a printer doesn't have access to the app. Now, in their defense, they did say that they're working on access for this printer for the app and I'm not sure if they're even working on a camera mod for this printer or not, but honestly, having app access to a printer is actually pretty crucial. At least you'll be able to send files and control the printer remotely. Now one thing that I think that they really got right on this printer was the build plate mount and the build plate mount allows you to remove the build plate and attach it vertically right here on the side that way your print can drip into the vat and you don't have to worry about large prints dipping into the vat or even hitting the LCD screen when you're trying to drain them off. You just simply slide it in, it holds your print, and then you can go do whatever you need to do and come back later and take off your print and it'll be drained for you. So for me, I really like that, the lid on this thing. Now the way this lid opens and closes, it's on a hinge system and it doesn't require a lot of clearance on the back side of the printer. So you can kind of have this printer right up against the wall and you can still open the lid pretty much all the way with it up against the wall. Now I did mention that this printer has Wi-Fi capability and the way they did Wi-Fi on this printer was kind of weird. It has a USB dongle with an antenna that you plug into the back versus having everything just kind of integrated into the system like most printers. I'm not sure why they chose this way. I'm sure they had a logical reason in doing it, but yeah, I haven't seen this on a printer in a while. Now it also has an ethernet port. So if you want to go that route, you can go that route as well. Now, when I review a printer, I don't really critique over things like that. I mention it so you guys know, but honestly, what I I'm looking for in a printer is reliability, quality, and usability. Those are three things that I really look for. And so whenever I say, oh, I, you know, I really like this printer and I think this printer is good. Those are things that I'm talking about. Other things are really just aesthetics and convenience. And those are things that will kind of vary from person to person. What is convenient to me may not even matter to you. So when it comes to quality on this machine, I think that the quality is really great. I mean, it is a 16K resolution printer. And for being as big as it is, it doesn't affect the quality whatsoever. It's putting out that 16K even in this big build format. Now, as far as reliability, I did have a couple of prints that didn't come out all that great, but I can chalk that up to my settings and just not being a professional resin printer. Like I'm more of an FDM guy and I know those settings like the back of my hand. Now resin, I do know quite a bit about resin, but at the same time, there's still a lot of stuff that I don't know off the top of my head that I have to sit down and do research and just go, you know, trial and error and seeing what works. Now, when it comes to you usability. I would say this thing passes because honestly, I was able to just get onto the slicer, upload a file to it, and I uploaded that file to the USB stick, came over here, stuck it in, and just hit print, and it worked just fine. Now, one thing I was having trouble with was sending files from the slicer over Wi-Fi to the printer. Now, it's kind of wonky how you have to set up the Wi-Fi. I was reading the instruction manual. I just ran out of time and I didn't have time to deal with it because I have a lot of stuff going on and I wasn't gonna dedicate a whole bunch of time for Wi-Fi, something that wasn't very crucial. It does work, but you're gonna have to spend some time and figure it out. I'm sure you guys will have no problem with it. And I'll do a little video short or something and post it for you guys. You don't have to go through what I'm going through to figure it out. They also sent us out the Cure 3 Ultra along with the W230 wash station. 
Now the W230 is an ultrasonic wash station. It doesn't have fans or anything like that. It operates strictly on ultrasonic. Now the only downside to the W230 when you have the GK3 Ultra, the W230 is not big enough to handle the full build plate of the GK3 Ultra. Now I reached out to Uniformation about it thinking maybe I'm missing something. Is this your biggest wash station? And they said yes, unfortunately we used to make this one but now it's just the W230 and that's what it is. So if you have a print that's as big as this build plate, you won't be able to just dunk it down into that wash station you're gonna have to figure something else out i ran into that issue when i printed something big it wouldn't fit i was racking my brain like how does this not fit this is the wash station for this printer we'll come to find out it's actually not for this printer it's just the one that they carry now and for some reason they don't make the big one for the ultra but most of you resin printing guys i'm sure you have a big vat or something like that that you keep alcohol in anyway so it's probably not even a huge deal now it'll probably be a pain if that's all you do is big prints and you can't even use your wash station but for me i don't plan on doing full build plate builds all the time so it's not that big of a deal but I really do like the build of the W230. I mean, it's got a, a metal housing and then it's also got a drain port on the back. So if you wanna drain it, it comes with the hose that you can hook up to it. You don't have to pick up the machine and dump it. You could just turn the little ball valve and dump out all the liquid straight into a catch pan or whatever you have. And the cure station, I really like the cure station setup. It has a turntable on the inside that you basically just sit your print on. And it even has a fan heater that comes on for the first like minute, I believe and I really like the way they have the light set up they have a clear turntable and then they have a light on the bottom that way whenever you sit your print in there the bottom is getting UV light as well and that's always been kind of an issue on other cure stations because the plate is usually opaque and it's solid and whatever you sit on there the bottom's getting zero UV light well they kind of thought of that and so they addressed the issue with the clear plate which is pretty smart now let's talk about price on this bad boy now it is a premium printer I mean it has auto feed it has heating it has a big lcd touch display now although it doesn't have the camera and it doesn't have app access it's pretty much loaded other than that and what you're really paying for on this thing is its size and quality so at $14.99 it's not a terrible deal now granted most of the time you can catch this thing on sale for as low as 11.99 right now it's even on sale for 12.99 that's 200 bucks off now the wash station for the ultra is typically 329 i think right now it's on sale for 289 which that's a really good deal for that wash station because it is absolutely huge and the configuration of it with the clear bottom, it's a really nice setup and it looks really good in the studio on the shelf. Now the W230 wash station, it's typically 259 and I think it's on sale right now for 239. So you're looking at somewhere around 500 bucks for the wash and the cure station and another 1200 bucks for the printer. So you're looking at all together about 1800 bucks for the whole setup that I have right here. And that's about the price of what I paid for the K2 plus 3D printer with a few add-ons. So at the end of the day, you have to decide whether that price fits your needs and does this printer fit your needs. Now I would highly suggest if you don't need this build size, then there are other printers out there that'll fit your needs a whole lot better like the gk3 pro which is actually cheaper than this one and it's smaller it also has the camera and the app access so to get this big build size there are some trade-offs it's just going to be up to you to decide whether those trade-offs are worth it or not